Scientists and governments have been saying since the start of the pandemic that we're not going to see a vaccine anytime soon, that it will take at least two years to develop. Fast forward eight months and suddenly we're seeing multiple vaccine candidates being given to people at risk. Did they cut corners? Are we sure it's safe? It all started back in January 2020 when Chinese scientists released the sequence of the virus. Since then, companies and research institutes have developed more than 300 candidates for vaccines against COVID-19. How did they progress so quickly? This is an important question. Many people hear the vaccine was rushed and they assume the corners were cut. Like, I'm in a hurry to cook a turkey, so I'll bake it for 30 minutes instead of three hours. That would be a bad way to, to hurry something up. If I did that, we would all get sick. But with vaccine development, the collaboration with Operation Warp Speed and other governments was one that wasn't sped up by cutting corners. Instead, the process was really sped up by four main mechanisms, three that uh, we were able to control, and one that's due to the nature of this pandemic itself. The first is that there was a, a real shifting of financial risk from companies uh, to the government. So this is specifically true for the Moderna and the AstraZeneca vaccine. Instead of the companies carrying the financial risk of developing the therapy, the governments offer hundreds of millions of dollars in, in grants and guaranteed uh, purchases that really carry that financial risk. This really allowed the vaccine manufacturers to really go all out full speed with research and development and full speed recruitment and enrollment in clinical trials because they knew that they weren't really on the hook for paying the bill. You can imagine if you're a company and you don't know if your product works, you would advance one step at a time, being really cautious to make sure that you don't waste money, blow a ton of money on something that could ultimately fail. Uh, if you take the financial risk away and tell scientists to move as quickly as they can without the fear of failure, the process can go much smoother, much faster. The second piece that enabled this to go faster was coordination between companies, funders, and the regulators. Traditionally, the company that's making up a therapeutic or a vaccine and the regulatory body that approves it are completely disconnected. They'll have meetings where the company can ask questions and the regulatory body will provide non-binding answers. So they'll say, we'd like you to have at least 5,000 people in the clinical trial. But what they're not saying is, if you do a 5,000 subject trial, we will approve your therapy. Uh, it's non-binding. So they could come back a month later and say, well, actually, yeah, we said 5,000, but we actually now want 10,000 people. This back and forth between the company and regulators can take months or even years for some therapies to ultimately get uh, approval. What's changed here because of this global pandemic is that from the very start, the regulatory bodies were involved in that uh, design of the clinical trial. So how many patients were enrolled? What endpoints should the companies measure? How often should the subject be followed for safety? And this was all set and informed by the regulators at the very start. And it was set to be uniform for each vaccine trial. So whether it's the AstraZeneca vaccine or the Pfizer vaccine or the Moderna vaccine, they all have roughly the same equipment and all have pretty much the same endpoints that they're measuring. With the regulatory bodies involved from the start and really controlling the trial design and expectations of the trial, it ensured that the first time the trial was done, it was going to be done in a way that the regulatory body expected. Third, the production and distribution of the vaccine actually started before approval. This typically never happens. You can imagine if you are a company manufacturing a product, you wouldn't make millions and millions of doses before you even knew if your product was going to get approval. So here, instead, really what happened is the governments, again, they shouldered that risk. You can imagine that the trial data would come back really bad and there's only, say, the vaccine was 10% effective. That's not going to get approved. Uh, instead of the company being on hook to pay for all these worthless vaccines, the government has already ahead of time guaranteed to pay for it whether they work or not. If uh, the companies had already made 40 million doses, the government would just have to say, fine, it was worth the risk. We'll just burn all of these because they don't work. Uh, and we'll go on to the next candidates. Uh, whereas if you were the company, you wouldn't make those 40 million doses until you knew your product worked and you'd actually be able to sell it. And so being able to shift that risk allowed companies to start scale up on both manufacturing, packaging, and distribution even before the approval of, of their product actually happened. And the fourth one really is due to the nature of the pandemic. We're in the middle of a very active worldwide pandemic. Uh, cases are skyrocketing all around the world. And this actually helped clinical trials reach endpoints faster. 
See, clinical trials like for vaccines, uh, they run until a set number of positive infections take place in all subjects. Then they uh, unblind the data and compare how many people got infected in the vaccine group compared to the number of people that got infected in the placebo group. Uh, the more active the pandemic, the faster you'll reach the preset number of infections needed to be able to compare if your vaccine worked or not. COVID outbreaks are all over the world, so clinical trials are able to hit their endpoints quite quickly. And then we just had to actually wait for the two-month safety data to finally get finalized before companies can apply for emergency authorization. So as you can understand now, when they say that the vaccines were sped up, it's not because they cut corners. They just cut out all the red tape involved in the manufacturing, distribution, and the logistics of actually developing a vaccine. This is what happens when you give scientists infinite money and cut out all the regulatory hurdles that are facing them. Just imagine what can be done if we have the same process for other diseases out there. So far, the trials were carried out in people 18 years and older and the elderly population because these are the people who need it the most. Other trials are ongoing that are going to test these vaccines on kids and other groups such as pregnant and breastfeeding women. And we learn more and more about these vaccines in the coming months, but we know now that it's safe and it's effective. So is this the first time RNA vaccines are being used in humans? Are they really safe? And now that we have a few vaccine candidates, do we really need all the other companies out there to keep developing and testing other vaccines? And the question we all have in our minds, when will things return to normal? Reach out to us on the comments below and let us know if you have any other questions about the vaccines. I'm Dr. Rukmani Sridharan. And I'm Professor James Ankrum. And stay tuned to watch our next video in this series that's going to answer some more of these questions.